Hey, Joe Gilder here. Today, let's talk about the grid. What do I mean by the grid? If you're the kind of person who likes to record with a metronome, I am. I understand the argument for not doing it. I understand people think it ruins music. I've found it makes me more musical. And me and my professional musician friends tend to like it, so I'm going to stick with it. If you would like to stick with it as well, continue watching. I'm going to talk about specifically how the the tempo and the grid works with kind of our production workflow, but specifically like how to use the grid and how to maybe get a little bit more out of it. Maybe you didn't know all of the stuff I'm going to show you um, for how to utilize the grid to help you be more musical in your music. I'm not talking about let's make everything sound lifeless and robotic, but occasionally it's nice to know kind of at least to just know, okay, the drummer's a little ahead of the beat here. I like the way that sounds, but it's good to kind of have that reference. If nothing else, just to be able to recognize, okay, a little ahead of the beat feels good. Too much ahead of the beat, now I can see, like, there's a gap this far between where you hit and where the beat is. Okay, that maybe feels a little wonky to me. And you'll notice, like, when you're in front of the beat, it's a different vibe than if you're behind the beat. One's not necessarily better than another, but um, some feel more groovy than others and have just different vibes. So it's just, it's a good, you should become closely familiar with the grid. That's what we're going to talk about today. So first things first, the grid is based on the tempo of the song and you set the tempo of the song down here. Oh, not there. <laughs> I just zoomed in on OBS down here, right here. So if we want this song, this song currently I'm in is 150 BPM. And if we turn on the metronome, which I've we've got mapped to the letter C just to turn it on. C for click, if you're curious why C for metronome. And if we come up here and just hit play, we should hear 150 BPM. Okay, we do. That's delightful. Now, first of all, if you're wondering want to know how to make a different metronome sound, maybe you don't like that sound, there's a button, there's a little wrench next to the metronome. By the way, there are wrenches hidden in throughout Studio One that give you access to a lot of cool settings without having to go to a full-on menu. This is one of them. Uh, this little gear here is one of them. The two big ones are on the left-hand side. This is the arranger window. There's a wrench here with a bunch of cool settings that kind of go to common settings that you might want to find. And then there's also, if you go to the mixer, there's a wrench here. Different wrench, different settings. This relates to the mixer. These relate. This wrench relates to the arranger. See what I'm doing? See how? Okay. All right, cool. All right, sorry. I was looking to see if something was there, and it's not. All right, so if I want the metronome on, I do this. Right now, that's clicking quarter notes. The accent is louder than the beat. I can change the sound if I want. Change it to logical. A little rounder sounding. Anyway, you can go through and play with all these. You can add your own, by the way, which is super fun. Uh, we'll stick with this. And if you want more subdivisions, you don't have to change the tempo to 300. Just turn up this offbeat thing right here. And this is like, these are like faders, right? I can turn up how loud the offbeats are. I like it like that. Accent, the beat, and then the offbeat. If you need the offbeat there. Um, and then click and play, I would turn that on. So I, whenever the, if the metronome is enabled, it's always on whether I'm playing or in recording and otherwise, and I just turn it on and off with the C on the keyboard. Okay. So that's the metronome. <clears throat> when we, when we change the tempo or alter the tempo or the time signature, it all shows up here across the top, depending on what kind of mode you're in. So let's zoom in up here for a second. This is where you're going to find you probably will never touch this or rare, very rarely touch this. The one thing you may change is whether this is in seconds or in bars. Um, so it's changing how this this timeline here across the top activate or, or operates. If I'm using this to edit a podcast or a video or something linear like that, I'll change it to seconds so I can see, okay, we're at, we're, you know, we're at the 10-minute mark in this podcast. That's helpful. But... I'm not doing that almost ever. So when I'm working on music, I set it to bars and I will typically just set it to, I think 16th notes is kind of the normal. You can also set it to, let's see, let me zoom out a little bit. Yeah, you can set it to quantize, which will set it to whatever you set as the quantize amount here. Um, I almost never mess with quantize. That has to do with if you're snapping things to a grid, how how aggressive do you want it to be? 
164 is pretty aggressive. 16 is probably good. 30 second doesn't really matter. Um, but here it's about basically setting it the time base. What do we see here on this grid? You can see it's a grid. They're going up and down. What do we set that to? If we go something crazy like quarter notes, that's great. We're just going to see a vertical line every quarter note. And it'll kind of adjust as you zoom in and out. But when you're zoomed in like this, we're looking at one measure, measure 372, beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four. We can't see any subdivisions. That may not be helpful. So if the if the drummer is playing eighth notes on the hi-hat, so the tempo is da, 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 but he's playing da, 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 da. We want to know if each of those is lined up. We can't really see because we're only seeing quarter notes. So changing this to something more higher. Look, at you have so many options. Oh, my goodness. There's so many there. I usually do it on 16th notes because that's typically about as, as, as granular as I want to go. So now we can see this is the same measure. Let me zoom out just a smidge. This is measure 372. One, two, three, four, but it's subdivided into four 16th notes. So... 1 E and a 2 E and a 3. That's what I would do. And the cool thing is, is when you zoom out, it doesn't show you every 16th note vertically. That would be crazy. Here it's zoomed out. It's only showing me a vertical line every 16 measures or so. And so it's smart in the way it kind of adapts to what you want to see. So when you're doing timing-based editing, you're coming in here to see, hey, are these drums... Where'd my drums go? <laughs> I accidentally deleted the drums from this song. Oh, there they are. <laughs> I just had a, you just witnessed a freak out on Joe Gilder's part. I thought, shoot, I deleted the drums. This is the actual session. This isn't like a, a demo session. Uh, this is like a song we're still working on. But if I wanted to zoom in and see, okay, how's he doing against these 16th notes? I can see that. But you might notice, okay, it's kind of hard to see. If this is the line, it'd be great if the line went through the audio. And there's some people would want it to do that. Some people don't. I typically like to see the grid lines going through my audio so I could see exactly where this guy lines up. Otherwise, I have to kind of hold my mouse here and I can see, OK, he's slightly ahead of the beat. This downbeat, he is dead on with that snare hit on beat four. Um, but I'd love to see the grid lines there. Is that possible? Yes, it is. Let me show you where to go. Open up Studio One Preferences, which, by the way, is Command Comma. I use it all the time. It must be Control Comma on the PC. Come to Advanced and go to Editing, the Editing tab. And this has changed names, I think, recently. This one makes a little more sense. Show Grid on Events. It used to be something like The Grid Shines Through, which is very poetic, but this is just more straightforward. Show the Grid on Events. So as soon as I hit Apply, check out what happens to this blue section over here. Bam. So now it's not overly like intrusive, but now I can see the grid lines that I want to see. And if I want to see 30 second notes, I can change this to 30 second notes or I can set it to quantize and I can change the quantize to 30 second notes. Um, it's kind of. I don't really know why I would choose one over the other, but now it's very it's very granular. That's a lot. So I typically, like I said, I'll set it to like 16th. Let's just leave it there. Um, but now I can come in and get real nerdy with it, and I can see this kick drum was dead on. This kick drum was slightly ahead of the beat. Again, I'm not judging, or that's a snare drum. Um, it's like this one's dead on, that one's dead on. This guy is mostly dead on all the time. But I can see just what's happening. I'm not saying we should snap everything to the grid. I'm just saying now we can at least see the grid and make some better decisions about what's happening and maybe where the problems are. Next thing, when you're doing editing, you may want to um, edit this in a way where like it automatically snaps to the grid. As you can see, it's not snapping to anything right now. That's not super helpful. But this button up here, <laughs> not that one, this one allows us to toggle that snap on and off. It's mapped to the N on the keyboard. I guess N for snap. Uh, I've just memorized it at this point. So you just press the N and it turns that on and off. So when it's on, when I go to like, when I go to select something or move the cursor around. Okay, so I must have changed this at some point. Right now it's set to, this is the setting for what does it snap to? And right now it's set to snap to the bar, which is why it wasn't snapping here before. So if I hold down Command, because I want to use my cut tool, you can see it's only snapping when I get to the downbeat, to an actual bar line. That would be useful if I'm doing a lot of loop-based editing and I'm moving things around and I only want them to snap to the bar. 
Um, but for editing and pocketing and things like this, we'd want to change this. I like adaptive. It kind of guesses what you want to snap to, and it's typically pretty accurate. So from here, it's snapping to basically every 16th note. If I zoom in more, we can see it's snapping kind of every other line. If I'm zoomed way out, you can see it's just not letting me stop on an individual anywhere I want, or if I'm trying to slice things, it's jumping to a specific mark. So I just know wherever I go, this is this is cutting this right at beat two on measure 229, exactly. And so if I'm doing any editing or I want to copy this, these two beats right here, I know it's snapping to the grid perfectly, and I can just press N to turn that off, and now it's letting me select very, very specifically and precise. Both options are helpful. I find myself switching back and forth between them all the time. There's not really one mode that I stick with over another, if I'm thinking about it. And by the way, if you have it snapped to grid on, that also has to do with how the edges behave when you're trimming something. So if I'm pulling this back, you can see, instead of pulling back smoothly, it's gonna snap to every kind of bar line. So I can say, I wanna cut this off at exactly beat three or exactly measure 29. We can do that as well. That's all governed by this snap to grid setting. All right, so that is good overview of how the grid works in Studio One. Use it to your advantage. Don't overdo it with the grid, but it's a pretty helpful tool to have. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.